things unfolding, issues unfolding. Um, we started from bringing a type of electoral system, uh, which was the proportional representation. There was so much debate around it. And now finally we are using, uh, viewers should not um, mistake something. We are using a hybrid method. Yes, for the presidential and mayor uh, chairman, uh, we'll be using the first past the post. And for parliamentary and local council, we'll be using the district block system, which is uh, the proportional representation. So we are just using simultaneously two different types of system. So let's start off from that particular debate. Starting from there, the law, now we saw the passing of the Public Elections Act of 2022. We saw the acceptance of the uh, proportional representation. We saw issues around data. We saw different, different issues. Now, finally, uh, we saw APC uh, saying, finally, they've met the, their, uh, ECSL has met their demands and they are going on with the election. I will start with you, the social analyst. Let's talk about the preparedness. And do you think all of these things uh, coming into play is all part of democracy and we, uh, I think we are heading to the right trajectory? Yes, um, thanks once more. I think in my own view, um, from the intro you, you laid out, um, when you talk about our electioneering, which comprises a whole lot of, you know, system, and you could vividly remember when they passed the PR system, you know, the bill in parliament, you were there and you reported that issue. Uh, we saw exactly the arguments around the discourse, how Sierra Leoneans or citizens can able to understand the PR system. Of course, we've passed that, and you know the, 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 the educational system was going on, which all of us took part you know, in educating our people as to how the electoral system is going to be this time around, right? Yes. For example, you made mention of the mayor area positions and the presidency. Those who are the people you are going to see their faces on the um, ballot paper for the honorable members or councillor and all the other positions. It's just the party symbol you are going to see on the ballot paper. So for me, it means a lot for our democracy. All what is happening for you know, APC or the APC party asking for the data to be given to them, for which I think since last week, all of us who are part of that meeting when you know, the APC as a party put out their position paper, explaining their grievances, all what is against them, all what they want to see for the election to be credible, all what they want to see happening within the electoral process, I think they made that demand and they put their position paper, they make it clear and they even give us time, ultimatum, of 72 hours. But this is what we are yearning for. For us campaigning for democracy and good governance, these are the things, institutions, for example, like the ECLC, those who are managing the you know, electoral processes, the PPRC, these are the issues we should be able to speak around, discuss them. We engage the authorities that concerned. Then we bring out what we call dialogue. When we accept our views, then we put them on paper. I think our democracy, Sierra Leone, is going to be the learning point. And more especially this, 20, um, this June 24, tomorrow, elections is going to be an historical election within Africa and the world at large. We are all seen exactly what transpired during the, you know, the, 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 the passing of the law, the um, Supreme Court interpreting the constitutional, you know, bridge where, you know, political parties were saying the, the, the PR system was not part of our electoral system. So we saw exactly how the the Supreme Court dealt with that issue, and that is what we want to see where political parties or, you know, authorities that are responsible, more especially this time around, the judiciary, they act to be, you know, very robust, make sure that the idea to electoral issues promptly, like what they do for the um, PR system, 
So that is what we are expecting from all other institutions. When you say um, historical, uh, the election will be historical, uh, what do you mean specifically? Well, for me, we've seen we are, uh, as I mentioned, the 72 hours ultimatum given to, you know, ECSL. We've seen we are throughout, you know, uh, the campaign period. We saw exactly, you know, skirmishes around about tribal bigotry, about its speech, its messages, where, you know, you know, institutions are not complying, you understand, or responding to issue promptly. We saw all of that. And at the end of the day, we managed to put ourselves in one room and accept the real, you know, issues. Like what happened to the APC party. You find out that all the responses the ECSL boss made, that these are not new. These are part of the electoral system. And mark you, the observations we are making, I'm an observer, observing under the Human Rights um, um, Commission for Sierra Leone, 63 organizations under that Human Rights Commission for this June 24th election. Thank we you. are going to be around seeing where human rights violations are. We write our report, and at the end of the day, all those institutions representing organizations, be it the EU, European Union, African Union observers, we are going to put our reports for these 2023 elections, all what transpired as it started to the end. Okay. We are going to put those reports and bring it out to ECSL so okay. that when we want to review our laws, we look into those recommendations sure. as to how we can improve or boost our electoral system in Sierra Leone. Thank you very much, Father Monsundo. I think if you're jo just joining us, just know this is uh, Sierra Leone Decides. Um, we are discussing our range, range of issues um, starting from the electoral system, starting from preparedness, and we know we have only has to um, go to the elections tomorrow. And someone is acting on Facebook. You can also be part of the uh, program by visiting our Facebook page at AYB Sierra Leone. And Christiana Tiana Patricia is asking for the names of our guests. I guess you just join us. Um, we have Fodi Moriba, who is a journalist, and we have Solomon Sundu, who is a social analyst. Uh, they are here to help us anal analyze and discuss some of the pertinent issues. We have for the Moiba. Moiba, let's, you've heard so much about, uh, from Solomon Sundu. Would you like to respond? Um, what's, what does this mean to our democracy? Well, okay, um, elections are a very, very crucial um, time when he talks about your country democracy. And um, Sierra Leone, as we all know, there has been some effort for us to see how we can actually strengthen our democracy. So uh, elections is just one of those um, things that we ensure that um, we boost and actually uh, um, strengthen our democracy. And when you talk about um, democracy and elections, you talk about um, voter participation, okay, and showing that um, people have the right to vote. People uh, do have that kind of information or education they might need that will enable them to vote during the election process. And when you talk about elections in democracy, you talk about ensuring free and fair elections. You know, all of those things are, are what actually embed when you talk about democracy in elections. And you also have to um, protect in the right and freedom of individuals. These are also part of what we call uh, uh, um, strengthening democracy. So these particular elections, um, um, I would say, is very important. And then as we all know that um, this is the time for us to choose who will actually be the president for the next five years, OK? So it, it's a time for Sierra Leoneans um, um, to have the opportunity to actually choose for themselves, to exercise their uh, uh, human rights, to, to exercise their rights to go to the pools and actually decide who will be the president for the next five years. And this is very crucial, just like what um, Solomon Sundu was saying, that this particular election is a very crucial one. But um, we, 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 from, from, from the interview you, you gave, you, you made mention of a lot of things that has happened before um, reaching this particular point. You know, there has been a lot of things uh, 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 um, and that has happened. And yes, I would say it did, those things are bound to happen. Because when you have a country like Sierra Leone and we're in a democratic state and you, you have issues like this, they, they are meant to happen. You made mention of the, 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 the PR system. We saw how, uh, how it, it, it was a debatable one, you know, from when it was pronounced to the 
the, the instrument when it was tabled in the well of parliament, the debate among members of parliament, the argument, the, the, uh, the analysis, and everything. So a, a lot of people were actually uh, having their own um, views in relation to the PR system. So we, we saw where the Supreme Court actually uh, dealt on the issue, and at the end, they, we are able to actually bring out uh, um, the, uh, the, the, the final verdict on the PR system. So from the PR system, again, you go to political parties, there are a lot of call uh, um, from political parties, so was, so was saying, we saw where the um, um, main opposition party actually had some concerns, and um, uh, it was in this same AYV platform uh, that I, I called on the ECSL to ensure that some of the concerns raised by the Positions, those concerns were legitimate, and that um, there should be a, a, a way of dialogue. And this is what democracy is, uh, is saying. It, it, it means, and the voices of each and every one should be heard when there are issues along the way. Those issues should be should be addressed because we know that we, we've not arrived there yet, and we know there are, there are challenges. We know there are, there are things, but this is a process. So once we, we continue to address some of those challenges, once we continue to address some of those concerns, I think it, it's, it's like we are saying: yes, we want to actually arrive at this particular point in time. So now the, the APC, they are saying that what they, what they called for, uh, it has been given to them, you know. So this is what we are talking about, that um, yes, we know that there are challenges, we know that there are issues uh, along the way, but it, it, it's, about, it's about adhering to the call of people and giving them the opportunity to actually express their views and actually see that, yes, if this is my concern and I have a legitimate concern and, and, and those concerns and that should, uh, should be done. Of the law. Yes, yeah. I, I, I I know, and, and we are understanding the facts, and so we know that Sierra Leone is a law-abiding country, and we have our constitution, we have other acts that actually govern us as a nation, that we are able to ensure that we look at those acts, what does the law say about this particular thing, and how can we be able to ensure that we go about this particular thing again to ensure that we do not go against the laws of the land, because when you go against the laws of the land, then definitely this, it will also create another issue again, it will also create another problem. So that's why even when we tell people, for me, I believe in dialogue, you know, when these issues came, the 72 hours ultimatum from the middle portion party and, 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 and for the resignation of the, the commissioner and other commissioners, what I said that, uh, yes, we know that um, this is the call from the opposition. But yes, there was still room for dialogue. And we saw where the PPRC, the, the ECSL, the, 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 the Independent uh, uh, um, Commission for Peace and National Cohesion, they, they brought them together. It was at Bintumani. They brought all the parties together, brought the, the main opposition party together, uh, and the ECSL together, and other stakeholders, they were brought in the table, and they were able to iron some of those issues. So this is what we are saying, that when we talk about democracy, we talk about participation, inclusive participation, to ensure that the voices of each and every individual is being heard. So this is what we've been calling for. And I think we are, we, uh, we are making progress. We've not arrived yet, but I believe we are making progress in terms of us as a nation actually uh, 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 moving forward to also have a sustainable uh, and a very strengthened democracy. And tomorrow we are going to the pools, you know. And it, it, it has been a lot of fights along the way. It has been a lot of... De uh, 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 a, a, a confusion, a, a lot of disagreement, but sometimes we disagree to agree. So some of those disagreements, they were able for the ECSL to ensure that they, they, they are able to dot their eyes and cut their teeth uh, uh, while we are in the process. Those and um, and um, um, disadvantage, those disagreements, we're able to the security sector for them to plan well, for them to ensure that they're able to do what and what they're supposed to do, for us to go to the elections and have a very peaceful and very calm and transparent and fair elections. Because that is what we are saying. We are not only want to go to elections, we want to go to elections that is free and fair, that is uh, uh, and free from violence, that is transparent, that is participating, that is inclusive, because that is what democracy talks about. That is what democracy is looking forward to. So if we must ensure that we, we actually look at all of those things, I believe, just like what I said, we've not arrived, but I think we, we've made progress. Let's talk about security. Uh, you mentioned so much about security. Um, uh, uh, do you think the role of the security has been that positive uh, from start to this point? Well, we, we, uh, I, I cannot um, um, rate them 100% or so. Um, we know that, yes, there are challenges with the uh, um, security. Um, they will tell you that uh, we are challenged with resources. They will tell you we are challenged with several other things, technicality and all of those things. So, but uh, I believe some effort has been made, you know, because from a lot of engagement, the, 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 the Office of National Security, they've been actually having with uh, members of the, 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 the media and other stakeholders, you know. So, there are 
seen there are still gaps. Okay, when it comes to security issues, there are still gaps. But I believe those gaps are, are, are going to be addressed. The security sector, in day, in day in day and night, they will tell you that, yes, we know that there are gaps, but what we are doing, we are ensuring that we look at those gaps and see a way how we can able to, to cover those gaps, how we can able to ensure that we provide the necessary security for citizens that will be are going you, to cast their vote. Are you alluding that even though they had these challenges, um, they did their work job professionally? Well, uh, well, uh, yes, there, 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 there has been some effort, but because, but when you look at professionally, professionalism entails a lot, you know, because when you look at professionalism, you you look at we are able to do everything accordingly. No, no, I'll tell just, you, you just uh, uh, yes. Okay, so I'll tell you. No, so I'm, I'm coming. So look and jump. Let me just round up. No, no, no. Let me just round up on it because so when you talk about professionalism, you know, I will not rate them hundred percent, but I think they've made some effort to. Sure, that they actually handled when it comes to security. Issues. Thank you so much. Just like what I said, there are still challenges. I'll win soon. Doing. Um, 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 thank you, my brother. You know, always when we talk around democracy and good governance, I always say these are the expectations, these are the issues we are going to encounter as we go along. Just like what my brother said, we are not there yet, but we are trying to be there gradually the steps we are taking mark you this election as i said is a crucial one and these elections 70 percent of the funding is from us 95 percent I, I, well i will say you rate it to 95 percent i just want my, my my references to be clear because as we speak we want to say i mean we want to speak the truth to our citizens. Let so them you, understand. So you're contending with ECSN 95%? No, no, I'm not, I'm not. That is not the point. What I'm saying is like we are all agreeing to say the fact. That's my point. Okay, the Bec fact here is it the is fact. Sierra uh, Sierra Leone government funded this. Exactly. So it tells you that the effort being put in place by our government, all of us, it means we are moving there gradually. The electoral processes, the law, the default of all those mentions my brother made, like the security sector, it we reach it a time for me that there, 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 there is going to be measures, right, as to how our security will be manning crowd, for example, or how they can able to mand people who want to uh, demonstrate for their rights without no, you know, uh, exercising. I mean, they, 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 they are trigger or, you know, uh, and pulling out their triggers. That is, you know, shooting at the, the, the citizens. We have seen it. Just recently, we saw exactly what transpired at the APC office. And that is a call. For us, the citizens, we call on our citizens. Let us respect and obey the laws of the land. That is the only thing can guide our democracy. And to all other political parties, let us avoid this issue of violence. Violence have no place in the 24th century of democracy. We are saying to our people, let us draw, draw, let us talk. Now the whole world is going towards educational system. When we have that education in us, I think all of these things will be the thing of the past, like the propaganda. We saw exactly where, you know, people made claims. This part of the democracy. Listen to the voice, and that is the call to even our leaders. If who is going to be our president tomorrow, right? We are appealing that learn to have, you know, uh, dialogue with your citizens. Call it political party, call them factions, call them pressure group, but learn to have dialogue and negotiate on issue. That's the only way forward for democracy. But if you say you will involve that Bagbati, <laughs> it's no longer in the record of demo, uh, electioneering. Bagbati has no area in our electoral process, power in our demo. That is to say, we want to see smooth running in our democratic processes because we are going to elect those le leaders. They are going to represent us in parliament. They are going to make so many laws. If we are not careful in electing them, 
right? It's going to be the same chaos of what we have experienced. And what citizens should be able to understand that our securities are our you know, brothers and sisters, they are our mothers, they are our uncles, they are Sierra Leoneans, and we are paying them our taxpayers' money. So the bosses of all those institutions, the military, the police, call it the special force, the OSD, please see us as your citizens. See us as people who are paying you out of our taxpayers' money. Don't see us like enemies or threats. You have the potential to talk to us. We will listen. Exhibit professionalism. And you are making the point. You are trying to do so. We are not saying we are there yet. But we are making the strike. But what we are saying, please, our government, Try and put more money into the security force. Train them to become professional. Like the way we used to call them, the force for good. We want to see those things happening under the, you know, the next uh, administration. Yeah. My point here is, let us obey and respect the law. Citizens, if the security forces, you saw them you know, along or within your area, if they say, don't go this way, Pass this way, avoid this other way, obey and report. I have no confrontation with the security force. If you have confrontation with them, you are putting more pressure. If you look around what really transpired a few days ago, we put more burden on the security force, and the government has to spend so much money, mark you, for somebody to be in the streets. It means a lot. You have to create extra budget. And the economic situation now we are in, we need to simmer down the tension. We need to put down ourselves, you know, so that we can able to develop, you know, as a nation. But if we start seeing ourselves as, you know, political parties, not as Sierra Leoneans, it's wrong. Let's see ourselves as one people, one citizens, one nationalities that um, is, I mean, only one nation we have, and we are all Sierra Leoneans. So please, I am speaking to you know my brothers and sisters out there. Tomorrow, go out there and exercise your franchise. Go out there, you make sure you vote for development and not for you know other thing like you know fighting or any other thing within you. If whoever for example, to the youth. If they want to use you, tell the politicians, you have your own kids, you have your children, tell them to go out. Don't lead anything that will lead your life to death or to anything that you know, will not ogre well for Sierra Leone. Citizens who are blogging, who are out there, stop inciting our citizens. Stop insinuating issues. We are peaceful. We are one of the most peaceful countries in Africa. Please, if you're out there, you have all the facility, you have all the finances, you have all the things that will make you not to become jobless. That is what we want to see in our countries. We have started the footing. We have seen factories. We have seen the economic growth that is coming. We don't want anybody to interrupt those things. Please, you out there, the bloggers, call you political social blogger or advocating for a political party, preach peace and not violence. Uh, um, um, uh, thank you very much, um, Sundu. Uh, I'll bring in Moriba. Let's talk about uh, the election this, this time. Specifically, over the years we've been having elections and you've been seeing a shutdown um, in, the, in the country. That's no movement. You only have to go to the port and get back. Transportation will be very difficult. And when um, Kone was um, approved by parliament after being appointed, now, he stated that one of, one of his desire is to ensure the country has an, a, an election that will, will be so normal that people will be going about their normal businesses. So we're hoping for that atmosphere tomorrow. And the security uh, sector has also assured, the transportation sector has also assured that people will be going about their normal business. If you don't have an, uh, any business to do with ECSL or if you don't have an accreditation, you should not get closer. That was some of the things they emphasized. Uh, Moiba, what will you be saying to citizens 
in terms of their, their behavior, in terms of voting. Because you might say, people might say, I have a right, I have a right, it's my right to vote. But your rights also are within, goes along with responsibilities. What would you say to citizens in terms of ensuring the exercise their rights within um, um, the, the, framework, no, of the, the framework of the law? Yeah, well, that is very important. You know, as citizens, you must also know that, yes, you have a right and you also have responsibility. And your responsibility is to go there. Your right, first of all, is for you to vote. Yeah. It's your right to vote as a citizen of this particular country. But your responsibility now is for you to ensure that you go there and vote peacefully. You go there, if there's a queue, you stand at the queue, you uh, uh, um, go through all the process that you're supposed to go through, you cast your vote. After casting your vote, okay, if you don't have anything to do at the polling uh, 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 um, station, go home. Go home and sit, listen to radio for whatever updates you might want to listen to. But we don't want to have a situation where in, you know, there are violences in different police stations. We don't want to have that kind of situation. So that is why, and I believe the security sectors, they are, they, uh, they are everywhere. You know, police officers, military personnel, they've been deployed in all of the police stations to ensure that there is peace and stability in those police stations. And uh, um, so as a citizen, you should ensure that you go and cast your vote. From there, you go home and sit. And you, you spoke about the issue of transportation and all. You know, I, I believe in um, 2018 elections, there were restrictions for the movement of vehicles. But um, Senghwe Mara uh, uh, um, took the matter to, to court and Supreme Court. So they've passed verdicts on it that there should be no uh, restriction on movement on that particular day, especially vehicular movement. Vehicles should be allowed to ply uh, uh, around the, the country uh, as long as they are not doing things that are actually uh, uh, not in line. You know, if you, you want to use your vehicle to maybe transport dogs, to transport other uh, um, um, things that are actually, will actually uh, uh, threaten the peace and stability, then the security sector will be around. You know, there are going to be checkpoints around the country to ensure that if you are using your vehicle on a particular day, you, you, you go through the process. If there is a checkpoint, you break and the, the, the security uh, and people who are there, they will do their necessary check to see that, yes, you are actually doing what you are supposed to do. Because there is not going to be restrictions on a vehicle, a vehicle so that is definitely uh, uh, being assured, even from the ECSL and also from the security sector, they were assured that, yes, there is going to be vehicular movement, wherein people are going to be free to actually go around that vehicle, but ensure that if you don't have anything to do at the police station, you don't have anything to do there, you don't need to go there, okay? Even to say, I am this, I am that, you are not going to, to, to go to those police stations. Even us as media practitioners, we've been accredited. If you are accredited, then you have the access to go to police station and actually do your job, because that is what actually we, 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 are, we are going to do. But if you don't have anything to do at the police station, once you cast your vote, go home. I love the slogan from um, ECSL that they, do, <laughs> they actually say in a local language, say, Saffle. go Saffle. You don't go to the police station, Saffle, you vote Saffle, kind of Saffle, you don't wait for the results, Saffle, listen to radio if you win, glad is suffered. If you not win, sit down and celebrate to the win, suffered. I said the results suffered. Ah, so I thank think you that is what we actually we are preaching to see alone to ensure that we have a peaceful elections and come tomorrow. Don't forget that you're watching a special edition, Serial in Decides. And don't forget we are, have Albert George Sheriff out there um, um, with PPRC who are doing a peace match. Yeah. Uh, it, it is worthy to note that PPRC also emphasized the need that, okay, after the political parties have done their own campaigns, yes. we'll do our own rally on, on the very on the cool day, of day. To, uh, on the cool of day, like today. so that we cool off the situation, yeah. to raise awareness, yeah. to sensitize people on non-violence, on the need to ensure they exercise their rights within the law. Yeah. And we have Albert George Sheriff who will be joining us at any moment from now and we'll be going there to him. But in the meantime, um, we don't know if Albert is set. We can get some to, um, to him for just, let's say, an update. Hello, 
I think Albert George Sharif is we are still trying to get away so that Albert George Sharif will get onto us at any moment from now to give an update. However, we'll continue with the show. Um, someone is concerned about border crossing points, about access to to the the voting, where you're voting, Matthew. Also, let's remind viewers that um, the ECSL strictly said that the law does not permit one to vote where they did not register. Now, they made provision for, for certain special people, and that should have been done if you should have applied to ECSL. That includes ECSL staff and um, other essential workers that has something to do with the election. But observers, we advise that they do their deployment and show their staff and deployed where they are registered so that they can have the opportunity to vote because uh, ECSL will, uh, is careful saying, stating that they don't want a situation wherein an overvoting takes place and they start blaming them. So they are very strict that ah. one should vote where you registered before going out to observe in any other area. So uh, let's talk about the access. Uh, you know, we had so many issues with the registration. Some, yeah. some certain people had difficulty to access these registration places. And a lot of ch challenges came up. We've seen over the years other elections coming up. And you know, for whatever, there's no perfect election. And there must be challenges, especially when they start in the morning. They might have the setup, uh, the setting up, every other thing. And how will you try to massage the minds of people? Uh, you know, because this tension will be going on and they will be in the queue. All gene people, we not try, we not try, one voice and come you know, and all that creates tension. How will you encourage citizens out there? Solomon Sundu, I think. Yeah, uh, uh, for me, let me start from where you throw the question to uh, my brother about the vehicular movement. Yes. And that is where I want to congratulate all civil society organizations or advocates in Sierra Leone that when people say civil society organization, the media are not working, we are doing our job. Yeah. At that time, 2018, you know, we have this restriction of vehicular movements. We saw where our colleague took the matter to court, and that is what I always emphasize on. No matter the longer it takes, but we will reach there one day. When we challenge issue, right, within our jurisprudence, it tells you that Sierra Leone, we are governed by law, and we are respecter of the law. You see how the Supreme Court, it took time, but they bring out their verdict, which is in favor of all of us. It means that a Sierra Leonean, a citizen advocating for democracy and good governance, at, I mean, at that time, it works. We are now seeing tomorrow, people will be moving around, going around. But it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean you should take the law into your hand. You are still guided by the law. That is what, I, that is what I'm saying. You are still guided by the law. The law is there. Like what my brother said, if you are fortunate to, you know, bump alongside with the security apparatus, they stop you, right? Because we have what we call stop check. They can see your vehicle, perhaps they suspect certain clandestine issues around that you want to move with thugs or you want to move with other, you know, offensive um, um, weapons. They will stop you and check you. Please obey and respect the law, right? Let me go back as to how we can able to encourage our citizens. It's key because for all what has you know transpired within these few days in you know campaign and the other violence, I was always saying that this world you suffer. When we come to this program, people don't take notes. Based on our advices, we use the word. When you do this, go and relax, suffer. I think ECSL, that is why when we are on this program, we are very careful. I think they see some of us as people, when they speak, we speak for the grassroots. If you know that you don't have any businesses to do along police station, don't go there, sit down at your home, suffer. If you know you are not registered to vote, don't go to police station, sit at home, suffer. If you know you, don't, you are not accredited, for example, like what you said, because this time around, what ECSL does to all of us, before, you just give names for organization, how many people are to go and you know, represent your political party, just give names. And that was where 
in 2018-12, we saw those skirmishes around electioneering. So these are the recommendations now being put in place. ECSL is implementing some of them. Now, if you want to be accredited, put your voter center name, the district, your, your code, or they even photocopy if you are registered somebody. Because if you have no business within the kitchen, why would you go there? <laughs> that is the point. Huh? <coughs> so that is what I'm saying. Please, citizen out there, make a talk this pan creole. Tomorrow night election day, we they go for go vote for elect we leaders and we get for govern we, we get for be president, we get for be an um, honorable member of parliament, we get for be mayor, chairperson, councillor and the like. Do ya, we they talk to una. If you no say, you no register. Let nobody no come around you and fool you say, can go take that chance. Mm -mm, the law will deal with you. If you no say, you no accredited, for go observe, Election, no good day. See don't you owe safu, no get no business for go do day. If you know say you know to a person, the police station where you don't register, you don't go. Then somebody tell you back say no. Uh, if, if you go do other, you know, what's in and call them double uh, uh, voting. voting. The law they do, it go better. And we all on see what you know happen then this year. So my point I'm making to citizens, please let's keep the peace and respect the law. And one thing again. I was always saying that to political parties. We have created a lot of tensions within citizens. I am afraid that tomorrow I'm foreseen, and I'm, I've been always saying this, voter apathy is going to be created in our people, the fairness. Because just look, few days towards elections, what's happened within the country and the city, loss of life, propaganda, even where no true bloods are spread, people are making false you know, people are, you know, giving false, you know, a, a, a representation for Sierra Leone. Sierra Leoneans, we are not like that. We cannot kill ourselves like the blows we saw. Those are false blows. Let our leaders stop doing that. Let our authorities stop doing that. Don't use people as human shield. Why do we want to see blood? Why do we want to spill blood for us to have power? Power is not like that. Whoever has blood within this kind of, or sacrificing human beings, for their own gain. The God Almighty will tell your children, your generation yet unborn. And I know the laws <laughs> of Sierra Leone, we, we are putting costs on them. Because it's too much let, for us. Let, Why let, will you go let and cascade in, that we are seeing blood, which is not blood? Let me, let me bring in Moriba. I think you will want to have a jump on this. However, uh, Martin Bangura is concerned about the borders. Now, I'm sure the authorities concerned are hearing your concerns. And I'm sure they have done due diligence. I'm sure they've done, put some certain measures in place. And I'm sure they might have access. But along the line, this is your home of credible facts and on all times balanced news coverage. And I'm sure we'll bring you new updates. We'll bring in people, authorities concerned. We'll be continuing with the program until tomorrow. We'll give you new updates, live updates. Remember, we covered the election in 2018. On scant, we brought you live feed, everything. And we are bound to do it this time again. Moiba. Yeah, well, um, the borders, people are concerned about the borders. And um, ECSL, they have done their best to ensure that every corner, from district level, chiefdom level, to ensure that their presence is uh, in at that particular place. As long as you register during the registration process, you are going to vote. They are going to make all the provisions, all the centers where people had the opportunity to register. Those centers are also going to be available for people to go and cast their votes. So for, 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 for Martin, who is very curious about the security when it comes to the border, I, I believe the security sector has already put that in place. And also ECSL has ensured that they put all those mechanisms in place even before. The, 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 the elections uh, um, tomorrow, they've uh, um, uh, ensured that they've already done that. As we speak currently, they are deploying um, their um, uh, um, workers in all of those pooling centers to ensure that tomorrow, by 7 a.m. in the morning, pools are going to be open 
uh, according to the uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, pools that will be open 7 a.m., yep. then people have the opportunity to go and cast their votes. And the issue about going to the uh, um, um, police station and you are in a haste to go home saying, hey, I want to vote, the process is slow. Yes, we understand that the process might be slow. And that is something we cannot dispute the fact because there is going to be process. You need to come and stand on the queue. There is somebody who is going to I, I, I look at your details to verify if, yes, this particular Abdullahi say is the real Abdullahi that wants to cast uh, his vote. So they are going to ensure that they, they do all of those things. From there, you are going to be issued the ballot papers. From there, you are going to vote. So it's going to take some time. So if you are in the queue and you think, yes, the, the, the queue is very slow, you just need to exercise patience because you are there to ensure that you perform your, your, your rights and that is your responsibility. So here comes now you saying, yes, I'm a Sierraonian. Regardless of the fact that the process is slow, but I'm ensure that I wait, patiently waiting, so that I will actually cast my vote. So, and also we we'll talk to the ECS staff to ensure that they concentrate in their job and ensure that they actually try to do it before the time. We know that the pool is supposed to close by 5 p.m. That is the end. But if people are in the queue, if people are in the queue and it's already 5 p.m., there is no way they are going to close the, the, the pools, okay? They will ensure that all of you that are in the queue are going to cast your vote. Even though if it's 5 p.m. as per law, that is the, the, the time for the close of pools, okay? But as long as if they are in the, the queue, they will be allowed to cast their vote. So this is something that we need to ensure that we patient and let us ensure that tomorrow, let us have a peaceful election. This is what we're calling the young people. For me, I have been discussing with several young people that even some will tell you, I'm not going to vote. I said, listen, my brother, listen, my sister, it is your right to vote, okay? Don't say, no, I am not going to vote because there is no candidate that I actually want to vote for. None of them has convinced me. I will tell you that, listen, go there and cast your votes. Don't vote because this is my, uh, 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 because of color. Don't vote because of region. Don't vote because of, uh, you, you just think, uh, yes, I'll vote for this individual because of one or two. But you need to vote for development. Vote for somebody you think can able to transform this nation within the next five years. Because whatever decision we take now, that decision is going to determine, uh, 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 we'll take that decision as a country for the next five years. So I'll, I'll encourage young people, I'll to call on young people to ensure, go and participate. You know, it's better for you to go and cast your vote. Because if you don't vote tomorrow, you'll not be sitting at the back and, and crying, saying all sorts of things uh, 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 against the government in power. Because you had the responsibility to go and cast your vote for somebody you think will actually transform the nation. So if you don't vote, then you don't have nobody to blame. So we are calling on young people. We are calling on the age with every individual tomorrow. And sure, for me, if you even have the opportunity to 5 a.m., 6 a.m., go to the go, go, go there now and wait so that you vote early and you go home. So because this is what we want to see, we want to, we want to ensure that each and every single union who cast their vote, we don't want to see a situation where they say, oh, I was unable to vote, I went there, I was unable to vote, and we hope and pray that we're not going to have any of those instances in these particular elections. People are going to cast their vote, suffer, and they're going to sit at home, suffer, because this is actually what we want to say. Security sectors, I know, just like what I said, there are challenges, but we are encouraging them to be professional in carrying out their duty, okay? And there is also, there, there, there is, uh, there is a guide, okay? There is a guide being uh, provided from the uh, Office of National Security that actually tells them what is their responsibility on pulling day. And we believe the, 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 the security sector that we uh, um, deploy in all of the police stations uh, will be working with that particular guide, okay? Let them go through the guide. For me, let us spend time and study the guard so that, that they will be able to ensure that they act professionally in their duty. Because we want to see instances, you know, sometimes again, we have the, the some security uh, uh, personnel are the one sometimes uh, igniting uh, problems, uh, okay, in, in, in some cases. So we don't want to see a situation where uh, a security uh, uh, um, uh, personnel will be in, in, in maybe in an argument with uh, uh, citizens who is there to cast their vote. It will result in another thing. So they to ensure that they comport themselves, let them go by the guide that has been given to them by Office of the National Security to ensure that they actually perform their duty responsibly. They actually perform their duty professionally. So at the end, we'll have a very peaceful election because this is what we are saying. We don't want to have instances of violence in police stations. As how we, we all know what has happened over the, the, the past few months when we do have our by-elections. You see, those by-elections were married with violence. We don't want to go into those areas again. This is a time for us to ensure that we go and cast our votes and let us have a peaceful election. The world currently, they are looking at us. 
Okay, everybody, their attention, you know, when you when you walk around, you see a lot of observers, e observers, African Union, West Africa leaders, all of those observers are currently in country. So we want for them to have a very good result for us. We don't want for them to provide for us a result that is not good. But we want to have a very good result. At the end to say yes, we went to Sierra Leone, we observed the election, and this is what we have, and we have a very good result. They were able to comport themselves, they were able to have a very peaceful and credible election. Credibility is key. So that is why, again, when there are issues, we say to ECSL, go back to the drawing board and uh, uh, ensure that those issues are addressed. Because when there are issues and those issues are not addressed, and you go to the pools, there is going to be issues of uh, 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 um, um, transparency. People are going to uh, create eyebrow that election is not credible. And listen, one of the things again I want us to have, this is challenging, I would say. We, 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 it's hard for us to have for people to accept the outcome of results, okay, in elections. But we want to have this particular 2023 elections. Let us have an election where in, when the result is being pronounced, there has been acceptance. People should accept the results. And how can people accept the results when it's decision that they charge with responsibility and show that there's free, fair, transparent election? That will ensure that everybody will actually accept that result. And that is what we want to also call. And for me, I will say, whosoever that emerges as the president of Sierra Leone, okay, let them ensure that they don't only look at what, what they said. You know, when you go to their manifesto, a lot of promises in black and white. But we want to start seeing those promises being implemented. We want to see them working for the interests of, not for their political parties, not for themselves, but the interests of the country. And when you put your country first, you say, yes, I am coming here. I've been elected by my people for me to come and represent them, for me to come and ensure that I work for them. This is what we want to see. Mm -hmm. After the elections, let us have a leader who is very inclusive, Thank a leader so who much. will actually try to see Thank how so we much. can unite very, this nation. A very wonderful sensitization yeah. there. And as we wrap up the program, um, I will also join the queue to tell Sierra Leoneans, the world all over is watching us. We can rise above whatsoever petty things or whatsoever perception they've had about us. You know, let's rise above that and what in God say it will be, now it will be. Lord will just accept the result when it come out. Now, one day, Salo, we get. But we focus, go out there, vote peacefully, go sit on our use peacefully, yeah. wait for the result, and celebrate peacefully. Yeah. But we all put them together yeah. and push the country go before. We're not going to say for one go. Exactly. We're not going to situation for both some refugees and other persons in the country. Exactly. Sure. sure. But we know put all the steady progress we don't make over the years, where the world on the gate, we say we are the most peaceful in this, we go to and be back. And one guess alone we get, more focus, and fair way, put the country before. And whoever we get for emerge as winner, do ya? We don't get see so much tension this being time, and it don't lead to division in the country. We want for me you come and put the country together. We want to see somebody who will come put the country together. We want somebody who will come continue for seal and bridge that gap between the people of Salon. Because we all know one nation we did. Now this yeah. one country we get. Exactly. Do ya citizens then, where you go vote tomorrow? As you vote done, come on at this polling station. And, 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 and I want to just round up like what The way we Sierra Leone day right now, huh, my brother, few weeks, Sierra Leone go down day outside the security, the permanent security seat, so we decide for other nations in the world. We go day in that decks like we don't know. So. so people out there, we don't make poku strike, we don't take poku poku step then. Let we make sure say we put with eight redness. And we they talk to one of the citizens, the bloggers, for the past five years, let election, after elections, do ya? Let we go into developments now. Let we left this pulling down syndrome. Let we left for pull down with self. All the they do now for less salon better. Yeah? Do ya? The education business will not start. The development are issues that will not start. The thing that we don't focus on. Today, salon don't be number one for the Usai, other nations, America, uh, Putin. The other one, they, we all did it. But if we don't get peace, we don't go enjoy them. So do ya? After tomorrow elections, let not be like this past five years. All the time with the cost we serve. All the time with the misuse we serve. All the time with the tell we serve eight messages. 
try about big old trees. Let we left all around the Mendi, Timini, Kono, every tribe. We honor one people. Go Sudan, Safu. Vote Safu. You wait for the result, Safu. Enjoy Safu. No, Eva. Yeah. Five seconds. Five seconds. <laughs> I just, this I will talk and back back to you. Because we want for a sure say, we continue for talk to we people then. Say tomorrow election, now we all election. Then we go and vote for the person where you think say, go represent you. For the person where you think say, go can transform this country. No vote say now we come on at the same district. No vote say now we're not the same party. But vote for the person where you think say, go actually can develop salon. Violence, not a pay. Violence, not there again are we country democracy. We need for move away from the team there where they count Kuskas. Because when Kuskas then are we country, it will affect you, it will affect we all. This salon where we they so are the only country you get. I don't know for you. So say you get another salon. But me, now this one salon I get. So that's make maybe we pull up for the team there where they count most most in this country. Please tomorrow go and cast your vote. You tomorrow them. I want for talk to her now. You don't say when they say now we don't sabi for violence. They say now we don't perfect fet, but this time around, may they sabi we for people them, where they do team them, way for many for this particular country. Sure. Go tomorrow and vote and go to us as you don't suffer. Uh, okay. Not allow me somebody to use you for do bad bad thing to salon. Because remember say when salon de pan kuskas, when salon no get peace, now we all it affect. Thank you so much uh, for the Moriba and Solomon Sundu for joining us in the program, a uh, special uh, edition of a serial in the size. Remember, we have has to the election and everything is in place. AYV is set to cover the election. We have our team across the country, well trained, and we have our equipment all set. And someone is asking for a clarification. That is here, Jimmy is asking, is there any vehicular movement tomorrow? Please clarify. Sure. Oh yes, Jimmy. Oh, yes. There will be vehicular movement. There is no restriction whatsoever. People will go about their normal businesses. That is an assurance from ECSL. That is an assurance from ONS. That is an assurance from the security sector and all other stakeholders involved in the election. So just go out there, vote, and go back home peacefully. Um, till we meet again and we'll join, most of our teams are out there. Albert Josh Sheriff is there with PPRC on the peace match. And we have our team on the road, uh, Elizabeth and Olainka. We also have our team at Bintumani, um, who will be bringing time to time updates. I have been your host, Joseph Johnson. We are now days away from Sierra Leone's dates with destiny, the June 24th general election. In this defining moment in the history of Sierra Leone, here at AYV, we recognize the mantle trust upon us to be the voice of the nation fully. We take our task to ensure fair coverage seriously. We intend to honor our pledge to you, to be your home of all things credible, factual, and all times balanced news. Totally, this is our commitment to you. We have witnessed non-stop hours of groundbreaking broadcast in an effort that saw AYV rolled out eight studios across Sierra Leone at Star Hill, Aberdeen, McKinney, Kenema, Bow and London. With almost three kilometers of coaxial cable laid, connecting four ground teams that consume almost 100 liters of coffee from Chef Terina. The most important number is two. Out of dozens of aspirants, only two men had emerged from the conventions in February as flag bearers of the APC and SLPP, retired Brigadier Julius Madabio and Dr. Samura Matuil Simtamara. So far, we have witnessed a lot of intrigues. Maybe this is the beginning. Defections and realignments have been plenty. We don't know if there's more to come. The only thing you can guarantee right now is that your home of credible, factual, and balanced news and analysis, AYB Media Empire, will bring you every twist and turn of this amazing race in full color and in high definition. We shall have a comprehensive look at the developments around the election as we count down to Sierra Leone State with destiny. Women clamored and got a law that provides 30% minimum quota in governance. 